Welcome to the sports cast. July 16th, 2018, the day after the World Cup. What are you going to do after the World Cup? It's a big thing, but soccer still continues. There's a lot of qualifiers, a lot of uh, things going on throughout the summer. Obviously, August is where the big leagues start. But uh, yesterday's final was amazing. We had a good sports cast with David Hessel yesterday, a French squad, French analyst person that was you know going through all the details of the game. And uh, today we have George, a very unbiased analyst for the sports cast. George, welcome to the to the sports cast. Let's get this going, man. I'm excited. Well, it, you know, it, it was a very good World Cup final. Um, I said it was an easy final for France. It felt like some people say no. France had to put some work into it. Do you think France had it easy, or did they just make it look easy? No, nah, I don't think it was easy by any stretch. I think they got a couple goals. They were kind of lucky, you know, penalty call and then the, the own goal kind of thing. So, I mean, yeah, they kind of they kind of dug themselves in a hole, really, I think. I think if it wasn't for those two calls, you know, those two plays, it could have been a very close game, you know. Let's go into the details of the game. Uh, the first thing, Rasha, um, in the 18th minute, Griezmann dove that led to the own goal by, by Manduja's free kick. Um what happened was that Griezmann was outside the box. He was running, and it was borderline. The player was going for the ball, but also kind of hit him, touch him. But it wasn't rough. It dove, and the ref gave him a free kick. Was that a free kick, George? That was close. I mean, I think you could have gone either way. But, uh, I mean, I, I have to watch the play again. I don't remember that exactly, but I, I remember when he did fall. It didn't seem like he guy touched him, but he did touch him barely but i think he did though i think he made it i think he exaggerated it like it was more than it was you know yes and the thing is with those plays anything outside the box is not revealable by var uh which has become very debatable i say var mm-hmm. should not um you know should not be used because you know var could be you know could slow down the game um and i think it's bad for soccer um so what happened was after that um like they called it for a free kick and a, and a huge nightmare for Manducic as he guides the ball into the top corner from Griezmann's free kick, handing France the lead. Griezmann's delivery was on the money as he curled his cross towards the back post. Croatia had a deep defensive line, and Manducic attempted header glanced the top of his head. I think it was just a fluke, you know. Even though I think it was, was it, I think it was going in regardless if it got touched or not. I mean, I don't know. What do you think? Um, you know, it's a possibility. I mean, it might have been the goalkeeper might have had a better chance uh, to like block it or or just to clear it out. But yeah, the ball was going towards the goal. That's for sure. But I think they had to touch it. I don't think. Well, we'll see what happens. But then, eighteen minutes later, Ivan Persevich equalized a super strike from per- uh, Perisic levels the World Cup final. France failed to clear the danger from the resulting free kick as Mendusic, then Vita knocked the ball towards the winger. He took time and space to pick his spot on his left foot before drilling his effort past Yordis, a special effort from Perisic. Game on. Yep. The goal was pretty easy, and I think um, I think Perisic was the man... Uh, for Croatia, that was really trying hard, you know, and and I think um, you know it it just it just happens. Sometimes you have the opportunity, and I, I thought from there on uh, the game will be tighter, but it wasn't. George, uh, am I still there? Oh, sorry about that, guys. Hello? Can you hear me, George? Yeah. Oh, I hear you. Okay. <laughs> I think I lost you. Okay. Hello? So Perisic, um, Perisic tied the game 1-1. Do you thought or did you think at the moment that this was a game on? No, of course. I mean, I, I thought I've actually, well, I thought the, close, the game was going to be closer, obviously, but I mean, you, you don't expect a don't go, you don't expect penalty kick into the game. So, 
Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I thought Croatia was going to fight hard, and, and they're always a team. Like I said, they always like to come back from behind and win. That's how they've been kind of doing it. So uh, they're they're a tough team. Now. I think Croatia uh, played still really well. Then the 59th minute, um, no, the 38th minute, um, Antonio Griezmann takes France ahead with the penalty. Uh, what happened was Perisic's arm was not in a natural position as the ball struck his hand. The referee has taken his time to make the decision, and he points to the spot. The 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 referee had to go to VAR and to make sure if it was a handball or not. Do you think? Uh, did you thought that that uh, that it was a handball? I mean, obviously, it did touch his hand, but it wasn't intentional. Uh, it ricocheted off the. the of the uh, French uh, French player, and I, it's one of those things where he actually went like he didn't he didn't think it was a penalty off the bat, and then he went to check. He went he went back and he went back to check again. Like he was walking away and he went back to check it again. It's kind of like a a thing where like he 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 got doubt. I think the referee had like a doubt afterwards. I think people at the top told him about it, and then he kind of reversed the call and said it was a penalty. But I really think. It wasn't. I think. I think. I think it was a close one, but it's very different. I think it's it's very clear to know that it wasn't intentional because he was he was, he was in the air and he came back down and like his hands. He didn't really extend the hands. His hands were really where he's going to be when he jumps. So when he's coming down like that, he gets such. You know, I, I, I don't see how, especially if it touches a French player and then it touches your, your hand. It's it's different than if a guy's shooting go and then you're the only one there and then you just stick out your arm and you touch it like that's that's a clear penalty like you know Sanchez in Columbia game uh, in against Japan that's a clear penalty there and in this one it was not clear and it, it shouldn't be making that those calls like that in such an important game you know Griezmann converts 2-1 the forward holds his nerve from the 12 yards as he slots his effort into the bottom corner with ease sending Sapisic the wrong way Griezmann had a while to compose himself, and he had to no issue finding the net, allowing his side to regain the lead. Then in the 59th minute, this is where France, you know, yes, they went 2-1, but this is, was the, the huge decider in the second half. Pogba had a World Cup moment as he hands France a two-goal cushion in the final. Mbappe's break down the right flank stretched the Croatia defense. A low ball into the box was worked back towards Pogba, Via a deflection, his effort was blocked by Vida, but it rebounded back towards the Manchester United midfielder. With his second drive on his left foot, he found the top corner. The French bench erupts. They're they're closing in now. Yeah, that was, that was a lucky bounce too. You know, you know, it's just one of those things. And he hit it perfectly, though. He hit it right in the, in the corner where you know, the goalie couldn't reach it. It was a great shot. I mean, it was kind of a lucky, a lucky bounce for them too, though. You know. Do you think that was the moment you thought they're going to win the World Cup? No, uh, I mean at that point it was it was three one, right? Yeah. Yeah, three one. Yeah, that's where. Yeah, yeah, that's where you kind of felt like, all right, well, France is gonna, yeah, it's gonna pull it away because I mean it's hard. To, I mean, you come back down one goal, but down two goals, you know. The tie it just it was very hard. I mean, I still thought Croatia was going to score at least one more for sure. I thought it was going to be at least two more goals. That's what I thought. After that, I was like, I was going to be like two more goals probably. Then six minutes later, um, Pogba had um, has a World Cup moment as he hands France a two goal cushion in the final. But then uh, Mbappe breaks down the right flank, stretched the Croatia defense. A low ball into the box was worked towards back. Wait, this is from the repeat. <laughs> Sorry. Mbappe, yeah, makes it, <laughs> Mbappe makes it 4-1 um, in the 65th minute, making the second teenager to score in the World Cup final. What do you think about that? Yeah, but you know, it was, it was all Hernandez there that, that made it happen, which people forget. Like, he did an incredible play to pass it and, and you know, give it to give him that, that goal. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, like I said, France... He kind of about to kind of struggle in the first half. He really wasn't really like he really wasn't um, involved as much, you know. And then second half kind of opened up. I think that's obviously Croatia had to kind of play more aggressive. So yeah, the game opened up after that, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we he, he has a great future ahead of him, and 
there's just too much firepower in the end, Croatia. You know, they did everything they could, but they just didn't have enough left in the tank, you know? Which I got my notes together. Um, what happened was Mbappe, you know, surely knows how to put the game out of Croatia's reach. He takes Hernandez offload from the left flank, and he controls it in the middle of the park. From 25 yards, he lets it fly with a low strike that Vita fails to block and moves past Sebasic before the keeper can get down. France are on their way to left in the World Cup. Do you think Croatia was tired, you know, after those, you know, two previous matches? Do you think, you know, it, like the um, the whole tiredness really catched up to them? Nah, man. I, I mean, I think they're all they're playing as tense as they always have. I think what I really on the coach was saying was that that penalty call really, like, kind of deflated the team a little bit. I think their the balls are kind of down, but they're they're still fighting and battling, you know, hard. And they have some good opportunities to even score, you know, and then they'll be in that lucky goal and make the error. We'll talk about that now, I guess. And then, yes. Um, next. I, said, I think I had a good shot, man. And then in the 69th minute, what is Yoris doing? Manducha scores 4 2. The crazy theme of the game continues as Yoris attempts to play out from the back on his own goal line. He takes too long to pass the ball to Umtiti and allows Mundusic to make the closing interception, steering the ball into the net. Yoris has given Croatia hope here. He'll be hopeful that does not cost his side. Yeah, that was a that was actually like a break for Croatia because I was like, wow. I was like, well, they need a quick goal right now. Like, they got it. And it was like, wow, you know, like, this is not over yet. And what's that happens? Like, wait a minute, you can't sleep now because it's still within reach, you know what I mean? So it's plenty of time left. And that was a huge error, you know. You know, it just it just choked there for, like, that one split second. And as a goalkeeper, man, I never understood this one. When, when there's a guy coming after you, you know, coming to you, or right near you, the, the, you know, an attacker, like, just grab the ball with your hands, man. Just yeah. grab the ball on, wait for him, and then clear it out. You know, like, so don't even risk it passing it to the guy. Like, he, and, and the guy timed it perfectly. When you sit right, he, he, t- he timed it so perfectly. Right when he still about to kick it to him, very late, he, he, he intercepted it perfectly. Like, it actually bounced off his, his leg and went right in. Like, it was like a perfect, like, you did a perfect play. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It was, it was definitely the, uh, the error that I've seen some goalkeepers make. Um, but that was it for Croatia. Uh, the game lasted till the 95th minute. Um, it went extra five minutes of, uh, of injury time and France wins the World Cup champions. And then they get handled and they get handed the trophy while it's raining. But it all worked out. You know, when it's raining, it, I mean, it doesn't care. Uh, you don't care. You still live the World Cup. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I don't care if it's thundering or tsunamis. <laughs> you, you're, you're celebrating. The hurricane coming, you're just, hey, you worked all this hard to get it. Just for a little trophy. That's funny. That's a, trophy. That's a nice trophy. I, I wonder where the tro- where does the trophy go? Like, does that, like, the, 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 the like, the... The team headquarters or something like. What does that? Where yeah, that trophy go? the trophy uh, goes with the team, and then it goes to the federation. But it's very temporary. Um, I think they bring it back after a few months, or maybe after a month, and then it goes back to FIFA's trophy room because they want to, you know, display. Wait, it. Is that, is that, wait, is that the same trophy they used throughout the whole thing? Correct. It's so the same the trophy uh, that Germany had, the same trophy that Spain had, and Italy. It's the same trophy since the 1970s. I mean, they got to give them back. Not just like the NBA, like the NBA Finals, where you keep the trophy. No, you just you kind of oh, like recycle. I, I it don't over. know. I don't know why I thought they actually kept it. No, they didn't ca- uh, keep <laughs> I it. They actually kept it. Okay, no. I don't know that. And it's interesting because I saw it like on Instagram. Uh, Paul Pogba um, was showing the uh, um, was showing the World Cup trophy in the locker room. I was like, man, please take care of that because the first trophy has been lost. No one knows what happened to the original World Cup trophy, Jules Rimmett, and people think it's in Brazil somewhere. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. So yeah, someone stole it. You know what's funny? Though? Yeah, I know. Someone probably will sell it on eBay or on Craigslist apparently soon. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they're going to do that. Not on public. They're going to get caught. They're going to do that and download but the black market somewhere. Yeah, and there's a movie That's somewhere. That's all we know. It's probably somewhere in Iraq or something. <laughs> in the Middle East. <laughs> it's probably in Iraq somewhere. Some guy has it. Some rich, some rich guy in Iraq or Saudi Arabia that has it. It's in, in Qatar. <laughs> Qatar. Anyways, um, 
It was a good World Cup overall. Um, I thought France was not the most entertaining uh, entertaining team in the tournament, but they were, were like the well-deserved team. Um, they played enough to win. What do you think? Like I said, they, 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 they're a team who, which is, a, you know, were patient. They, they counterattacked when they had to. They had to score a lot of goals if they had to. They got, um, they took advantage of teams' mistakes, you know, and they took opportunity of the penalty kicks they had throughout the tournament. They, they made them. I don't think they missed one, if I remember correctly, but, um, they had, they had a great defense. I think that was really what kept them in every game. They had a great, great back four. Um, I think they played phenomenal. The two young guys in each corner, the left and the right back, Hernandez and Pilar, they think stuck up huge. Um, even though that, like I said, like what, what I kept saying is they're, they're forward, which is funny because they, they did it without Benzema. Benzema was playing, it would have been somewhat they would have been even more dangerous because um, Giroud or Garada, how you pronounce it, he's a guy that didn't do anything. Giroud, no <laughs> goals. He started in seven matches yeah, dude. and no goals, which just happened back in 98, the same thing. Like the like the uh, French starting striker, Gervais was the starter. And he scored zero goals. So it's interesting how things are parallel back to the 98 uh, French team. Yeah, I mean, but that, I mean, like I said, they're, they're, they have so many great, you know, they got good midfield, they got a great defensive team. They were just the best both around, best balanced team. Were they, were they always fun to watch? No, but I mean, what is fun? I mean, yeah, all these fun teams that are fly power, where are they out? They're, they're watching the World Cup just like we were. You know, they didn't make it. And that's the whole thing, like Brazil and, and, um, Belgium, you know, these teams that were quite uh, explosive offensively, they're, they struggled in the back end, and they let themselves expose. And, and, and really, France philosophy really was just bend but don't break. You know, they, they just make sure they didn't overextend themselves when they didn't have to, especially when they had a lead. They're not going to, you know what I mean? So um, that's how you win, man. Defense was championships, I know the saying it goes, but it goes for, like, any really any sport. If they have a really good defense, um, you can make up for not a good offense at times. You know, you have a really, really good offense, and we're always going to go back and forth. And then, you know what I mean? And then the defense wins anyway. So they yeah. played well, man. I, I think, like I said, EA Sports had it, right? They had it locked down. They're going to win. So EA I, Sports. I should put all my money on France. Yes. Sports. Follow EA Sports. And I will not pick France to win the next World Cup because the world champions never repeat consecutively. Well, has there been one? I, th- I think Brazil's done that, right? Yeah, once. Brazil's been the yeah. only team that's won it back to back back in 1958 and 1962. So, I would not pick a world champion to win the next World Cup uh, for the past three four uh, for like the past three World Cups. The world champion has has uh, been eliminated in the group stage. So, but I, I don't really think that would be the case. France, I don't. I, I think they'll still make a run for it just because they have. They still have a lot of youth in that team. Like a guy in Mbappe, they have all these young guys: Hernandez, Lavard, Pogba. All these guys are what they're twenty still, man. They're all young. Especially and, and Mbappe is nineteen, so like they have a lot of talent there, right? They do have a lot of talent, youth, and speed. I think they'll win the Euros in uh, twenty twenty, but I'm not going to give them a World Cup. Mark my words. Another World Cup. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, me. Uh, this next segment of the show, um, George and I have selected the best eleven uh, of this world. Well, well, well first off, I, I had said to Dad, "Let's just pick one person of each team." You didn't like that. He said, "Just pick whoever you want." And I said, "Well, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna pick just one combo, of one team, and then I'll pick everyone separately." Just because I felt like it was it'd be it would be a lot harder, but then it'd be at least you have more variety in your team. But I think what we could do, though, is um, I say we just go, like, we'll start from the back end, like goalie, and then we'll just straight off. I say, what's my goalie? Then you say, what's your goalie? And then we keep switching off from okay. left, you know? That's fine. Go down that way. Well. All right. That'll be fun. Then. So, all right, so we'll, who's your goalie? Yeah, my I'll goalie go. is Courtois from Belgium. Yeah, okay, nice. Um, I Like I said, I, my rule was just pick one player from each team and only have one one pair of teammates in the starters. So, uh, that was the case. I was gonna go. I was gonna actually go for uh, my my number one pick. Really was a guy from Denmark. Uh, Schmeichel. I forgot to pronounce the last name. Schmeichel. 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 Yeah, like. Yeah. But I ended up going. Yeah, I ended up going with uh, Choa from Mexico because he think he had a great World Cup and he had the most saves, like the highest save rate in the whole entire um, World Cup. So I, I liked him. So I picked him for my starter. Not a fan of Mexico or Choa, but good pick. Choa. 
Uh, who's your left back? Uh, left or right, each one plays either one. I like I got Kimmich from Germany. Wow, Kimmich! Wow, that's that's, that's a pretty good. Um, yeah. Um, my left back is Lucas he's Hernandez. He's the best player. Yeah, I love him. I love that pick. I actually I had him actually as one of my starters, but then says I ended up going with Grisman instead, so I took him off the team. But <laughs> Hernandez was my my guy there. But I, I forgot about Kimmich because I think he he was really one of him and Cruz is the only guys that did anything for Jerry in this tournament. And Kimmich is he's young, he's fast, he's very energetic. I like him a lot. He's really good. Um, and who's your right, right back? back? Who do you got for your right back? I got Marcelo. A good pick. Kind of old there, but me older. I got uh, I got Trippier. I got Trippier from England. I think he he played um, phenomenal. I think he he's, he's really really good. Um, so yeah, he's one of my. Well, he, I think he was the, the more consistent player from England the whole tournament. I think he him and Kane obviously, but him he was like he did everything for the team in this in the, in the, in the tournament. That's not a bad pick, um, uh, especially from a Colombian. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he was my favorite player from England. I mean, I'm not going to be biased, but good job. If I take Kane, but I Trippy, I think he was. You know, he did a great goal. I think he played great. So he's my favorite player to watch. Um, and who's right, so your who two center backs? Uh, I have Silva from Brazil, um, and Mina from Colombia. I love Mina. So I got those two guys. I got Godin, and I got Mina. Yeah, Godin. Yeah, Godin is a good choice. I have a thing about getting him. He's a little older, so I, I ended up like thinking, ah, I'm also younger, my team. Godin was good. I actually have, I had a bench, I don't know if you had a bench spot, but I had three subs. And I, one from each position, I had Cassettes instead as one of my, uh, you know, Cassettes, uh, the defensive back. I had him. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think he's a left back, right? Or right back. I mean, he it all. Uh, yeah, your wise defense was one of the best in the tournament. They just couldn't overcome France, and maybe the whole Cavani situation yeah. kind of screwed them up. Um, who are your midfielders? Yeah. Then, uh, well, I went four four two. I don't know. Did you, did you go with the same? I had the four four two, but the top, like I had Ronaldo as a false number nine, right behind Kane. So, well, I just said my forwards. <laughs> oh, okay, so um. So yeah, well, that that was for me. That was the most like hard decisions to make because there's so many great midfielders in the tournament. Um, I actually almost forgot about Messi. It's funny. I was like, didn't even pick him. I'm like, I, I would not. I, I would Messi. not care because he didn't have a good tournament. I don't. I don't know if he didn't have a good tournament. He had, he had assists and he had like two or three assists in, in the tournament. Like, it just team around him sucked, man. Like, uh, he's still a dominant player. Um. He still impacted the game regardless. But um, I ended up going with uh, in the right, in the right and left. Um, I guess flanks. I like. I got Modric and Eriksson. I really love Eriksson from Denmark. I think. I think he was really the only thing that kept Denmark alive. And he um, he's young, still in his prime. He's going to have a great career ahead of him. Um, he's either I, I, I squeezed Eriksson there. I really liked him. The other guy that I liked instead of him that I had thinking about to replace him with, I was back and forth. He's in my bench, kind of. Is Isco from France? I think he was like their. I mean, not from France, from Spain. From Spain. I think he was like their best player in all. Don't do that to a he did everything for that team, and they couldn't do anything. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, Isco was great. So I got Eriksson, and then in the end, I, I didn't have my two mid midfielders that would run the team would be Messi and Griezmann. Um, Grisman was one of those guys where I was like, I didn't, I wasn't sure to go him or Hernandez. My team, I was, I was only going to pick one guy from France. I think those are two of the more consistent players, so I ended up going with Grisman instead. Okay, here's my midfield. Uh, the two central midfields I have is Modric and Conte, Modric and Conte, and then a left with uh, Conte in the middle. Yeah, Conte in the middle. Modric is a defensive slash, you know, uh, playmaker, hustler. Let's go, you know. Back and forth in the field, um, so it's a pretty solid team so far. And who are your strikers? I named mine already. So you had who? I had Ronaldo and Kane. Kane up top, and then Ronaldo right okay. behind him. I went with a little hybrid actually. I want the hybrid because these guys they could play like attacking midfielders, flanks, or they could play forwards. So I went with a little different style. Um, 
Ronaldo was one of my choices, but I had him because I don't, I don't like, I like him, but I don't like him. You know, like yeah, I get to have him, I guess, but I had him on my bench. My two guys really was Neymar and Hazard. I think they both played. The short, fat guy. Uh, striker, strikers in the middle. Uh, the only really striker that I like that that played well was Kane, right? I mean, everyone else kind of struggled. Cavani, Cavani was good. I thought about getting Cavani in there actually, but um, you like a pure I striker. Hazard and, and Neymar. Uh, I, can, uh, I don't. I, well, I don't like. I, I like guys that could defend and, and come back and attack, and you know, I, I like guys with speed and. Agility. I don't really like the guy that's just waiting there for the ball to score a beautiful goal. Like I, I don't care much about those players. I feel like they get all the glory, but they don't put their hard work. So I like Hazard because Hazard plays a combination of forward and midfield, and Neymar as well in the front. So I had Neymar and Hazard, and as Neymar and Silva being my only teammates from Brazil that I used as a combo. In my I would team. think I would think Kane probably. Obviously, he won the Golden Boot. But he was definitely the pure striker of the World Cup, probably the best striker of the World Cup, of course, because he won the Golden Boot. But he was amazing. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know if it was amazing. I mean, he did take a period of his of his, of his opportunities. Half his goals were a penalty, so I mean, I don't know how much that really counts. Three penalties. Um, because even, I think what the, remember James didn't James he won the last he won in the last World Cup before this one. He got six goals, right? But. I don't think none of them were actually penalties. Maybe one. I don't remember him making a penalty, but they were all like pure goals this guy had. <laughs> uh, I just feel like there were so many penalties in this tournament, right? There's so many penalties and there's so many own goals, right? There were 12 own goals in this tournament. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it's crazy. But, you know, I mean, I have to compare it to the other home goals in the past tournaments. 12 sounds about right for 64 games. So, <laughs> I mean, what do you expect? There's no perfect, uh, perfect team. You, you know, you're definitely gonna force some things. Uh, I think, I, I think, I think that's way, that's way more. There's over average there. I think, right? I mean, twelve and sixty four games. That's one every what? Every three games or every one every? I well, don't know, less, right? More than that. What is it? One every two and a half games? I think. Yeah, you're the odds guy. I think you. No, it's one, more. No, no, it's one out of every three. One out of every three. And a, yeah, yeah. One out. One out of like every like three and a half, like four. Well, it's less than four, right? So it's. What was the worst game? Forty-eight. How many matches are there? There's sixty-four games. Oh, the worst. Oh yeah. So there's. Yeah, I guess. Um. The the worst game. What do you mean? Like in the in the in the knockout stages? No. Overall, my worst game was Denmark versus France. Well, yeah, they, weren't, they weren't playing for anything. That's the whole point. That was, that was the whole it, point of the game. It was, it was the worst game. Like the it was the worst game. I mean, th- this is the thing. You know, it might be, it might hurt the World Cup. I know they're saying like they do random, like uh, they when they're going to play each other is random. I don't know if that actually helps. I feel like somehow you have to do a way where you. It's kind of like the NFL season. The NFL is brilliant at it. They. They know how to put the season in the games that matter, like towards the end and in the middle. They kind of spread out all of like the great games, right, through the season. Yeah. So the World Cup, you don't want to have that happen. It happened like what several times where we had two of the better teams in the group ended up not have to play for nothing in the third game. So England, they Belgium, their players are play like exactly. So that hurts. I think that you don't want to see that. People, imagine you flying over there to watch like your. Your team, like, oh, Denmark against France, like, this is the best game, or Belgium against England, oh, I want to watch all the best players and everything. And they're all just basically playing, like, a scrimmage. Like, it's kind of, not even playing the, the best players, they're rushing out of them, they're just whatever, they're just, they're just getting zero-zero games. Like, do the fans really get their money's worth? No, not really, you know. So, um, I think somehow they have to kind of change that, because there's going to happen. Imagine, like, imagine, like, the 48 teams, whatever, uh, what's going to happen in the future. It's going to be crazy, like, stuff, but... The worst games were the ones I never watched, man. Those, 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 you know, like Iran against like uh, what, what, what's the Morocco, Saudi Arabia, or something like that. No, it was. Morocco. I didn't watch those games. Or even Spain beat them and all that. Like they were probably closer games, though. But <laughs> the most shocking game to me was Japan against Belgium. That to me was amazing. It was that game was like one of those games I didn't expect to like. That was incredible. I, I feel bad for Japan, man. I just Japan ended up like. Man, I, I felt baffled. I can't believe they, they they just broke down in the end like that, man. And, and, like that. Which is surprisingly because they had like like the two unlikely heroes uh, with Fellaini and Chadley. So that was the interesting part 
uh, you know, because they're kind of low key players in their clubs. I mean, one comes from a bad club, and the other one hardly starts for Manchester United. But even though he's with Manchester United, but uh, yeah, definitely a surprising game, a shock. What was the best and Bra- game? Yeah, um, and Brazil too. Yeah, the best game. Brazil could have won. I think Brazil had a chance to beat France, but they never got to play each other. Yeah, they never. Well, France always beats Brazil. I mean, I had France either way going to the final. Belgium, Brazil, they're going to beat them. <laughs> um, what was the best game? My best game uh, was still Spain Portugal. Second to that is Colombia England. Ah, oh, Colombia England. That was, a, that was an ugly game. That was just a. Eh. <laughs> I, it was a bad foe. By they were just hitting each other. I, I don't like it. It, it was oh, nobody. Game, yeah, Portugal and Spain. That was a fun game. The first game. So the best game. I mean. Huh. Was not the final? <laughs> I don't even. The, 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 one, the one that Germany had that last minute goal, man, to keep it stay oh, alive. against Sweden. Lost, that, that was, was my great. favorite goal of the tournament, actually. <laughs> that, that, goal, that goal was so, such an amazing clutch goal, man. It was so it. emotional because, you know, Germany has never been in trouble before. This is crazy, man. I mean, who would have thought Germany wasn't going to make it to the knockout stages? Spain got beat by, by Russia. <laughs> Which is interesting because... Like, because how did these things even happen? Like, it's interesting because because I was hearing from German journalists before the World Cup that, that they were saying that there was a lot of infighting in the German uh, team. So that's why they weren't surprised that they got out early. Yeah, the team had a lot of a lot of issues, man. I, I mean, I don't know what exactly what was, I, I think it had to do with the coach. I don't like the coach at all. I think that he's the main issue there. But um, which 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 they signed him a, a, um, a um, extension for two more years. I hate that. Yeah, that's, that makes no sense. Makes completely no sense. You have all that talent in your team. You didn't even bring some of the guys you should have brought, and you don't even make the knockout stage. You that's that's horrible. I mean, it's you don't even you just have to get fired in between. Like, oh, they fired you halfway through the world, <laughs> you know? Like, I mean, I don't, I don't understand that. Yeah, it's something you know, it's, that it's crazy, but it, yeah, it's just it's it's just who knows what happens inside the federation. Uh, also, Argentina's federation was horrible. Uh, they fired Sampioli yesterday. Uh, back to Spain. Yeah, Spain had a horrible you know situation. Real Madrid, you know. <laughs> Had like the new story of hiring like the new like the like, the uh, Spanish coach the day before the World Cup. That was awful PR. They could have done something better to announce that you know just you know sign the deal, but announce it right at the end of the World Cup or something. So you know there's some teams that didn't show up, but I think we're gonna see the rise of Italy. We're gonna see like the rise of Netherlands and maybe the USA will come back. So we're gonna see some stronger teams coming back. But uh, Chile, Chile's gonna go back. Yeah, know, Chile, hungry. exactly. So. It was hey, good- Colombia, man. Colombia, Colombia, man. If Colombia had Hamas playing full strength, man, I think we would have made a run for it. I think we would have beat Egan easily, and I think we would have been, you know, uh, we would have been there playing against Croatia for the, you know, to the more of the World Cup. I think, but I think, I mean, I think whoever would have won that to- match between Colombia and England, I mean, if 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 Colombia would have won, Colombia would have gone to the semis. But uh, this whole Hamas injury, I didn't hear anything about this before the World Cup. It was so strange. I think he. I mean, he wasn't healthy at all coming in. And the thing was, they 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 they, they had to play so hard. Those two games, like those whole group stages, was brutal because of how we lost against Japan off the bat with Ongo and I mean uh, the penalty and the red card and all that stuff. So like he had to extend himself more, and like he should have. We couldn't really rest him as we wanted to. So it was bad all around. But um, one more thing before, like I want to uh, ask, what do you think about the whole? Um, Ronaldo going to who he went to, like I, I was reading an article on ESPN saying, "Oh, this is the reason why he left." And all they all they really wrote and all they, all they showed was what Ronaldo was saying, all great things about Real Madrid and how he loves his time there and he loves the people and the fans and trying to move on. But they never really described what what happened. Why do you think he left? Like, because obviously they would have kept him if he wanted to. So he decided to, he asked for a trade, right? Yeah, um, I think it was mutual agreement. I, um, I think he's done um, as much as he can at Real Madrid, you know, winning three straight championships, uh, three Champions Leagues. Um, and I think Zidane leaving. Um, I think Madrid wants to start something fresh. I, um, I think it was more on Real Madrid's uh, decision. 
uh, for this to happen. And I think Ronaldo said, look, I mean, I mean, um, I can fight and stay, but it's probably not worth it. They don't want me. Uh, Madrid, um, is a championship team and they want to move forward. They want to look, uh, look on. And I think Madrid, I mean, Ronaldo signed into Juventus. It was an okay move. I wasn't like really surprised. Uh, I mean, wasn't really like in all or enamored well, over the it. Best, is that, that's the best team in Italy, right? It is the best, the team, best, in like, best team in Italy. Right? I would have liked for him to go to Manchester United, maybe. Um, I could have said him, you know, really fit in well. He started his, um, his career. I mean, um, he was there early on in his career there. Uh, but Juventus has the money. Uh, they got the capital. Um, they do. It, it's a huge fashion area, so he'll, you know, get along with that. Um, I mean, him going there, I mean, I, I really think they'll be Champions League uh, contenders for sure. I mean, I think they'll go to the semis or maybe to the but, final. But let me ask you. Does a player have a say in where they want to go? I mean, I mean, how does that work? I mean, I don't know how that works. Like soccer, I'm not really that depth into like how does like the how does it work? Like the contract how, is it all guaranteed money? Uh, how does that all work? Well, in Europe, is very like the player controls like his own destiny, pretty much. I mean, he could have you know two more years on his contract, and if he wants to go, the team that 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 uh, like the team that he wants to go to could buy his contract up. Pay the club. The club is fine, and then he goes on uh, to his new club. So the player pretty much controls his destiny. Compared to the NBA or NFL, there's a lot of legalities, and you can't do that as easily. Yeah. Um, do you? Um, so is all the money guaranteed that they get? Oh yeah, uh, guaranteed. But obviously, you, you got to minus the taxes. I think it's like twenty five percent taxes. So, um, which is highly ah. taxed in Europe, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think he um, uh, all right. Well, he, he actually signed a four year contract, and um, his fourth year is an option. That means he can move out. Uh, so, but pretty much over there in Europe, you could leave whenever you want. Um, as long who do you um, think who's going to replace Ronaldo and Real Madrid? Right now, they're saying Eden Hazard from Chelsea and from Belgium, and maybe Mbappe and Neymar. They want to bring those three in. Um, Hazard is the easy uh, get. Uh, Mbappe and Neymar is going to be the hardest. PSG controls them, um, and if if Madrid wants them, there has to be a lot of money involved, and uh, money can only go so far. Yeah, I, I want to see Mina. Mina's in Barcelona still, right? Yes, and I heard Mina might go to Everton in England. Oh man, I, I want him to start. Man, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna become I think one of the. Better like center backs, like because of his height, I, man. He's like goal scoring. Like. I heard um, from the Barcelona people, they were saying that uh, like the likelihood for him to start is not good. Uh, PK and Umtiti is pretty much solidify uh, the center back position. I would suggest Mina to leave, and I think that's probably what's going to happen. Everton is a mid table club in England. I mean, they're okay. Uh, they're on the rise, but. I mean, I would think he should go better, like a Chelsea or maybe to Arsenal, but he definitely has a lot of future. Yeah, because he's too good to be. He's too good to be playing on the bench. He's too good. I mean, yeah, he's, no, too, yeah. he's still really he's young. He's twenty-two, too, I mean, and I think he deserves to be, you know, playing ninety minutes at his club. So, but he should be moving out. Um, he should be moving out. I mean, his value went at, up. And guess what? A lot of Croatians. Yeah, they're gonna pay him. Up. They're gonna give him a big contract. Oh yeah. A lot of Croatians have been a, a whole lot of interest from Croatians uh, to go to clubs in England. So you're going to see a lot of like Subasic and all these other uh, players uh, from the team heading to bigger clubs. Yeah, because the World Cup is kind of one of those things where other ones watching the world watching on it. Which which guys are going to rise up? Which guys are going to their stock is going to drop? Which guys are the ones that you want to get you know for cheaper? You know, guys get guys in better clubs, you know, and replace other players that leave. So, like, the World Cup is kind of one of those things where everyone gets to see, like, who you are and you show up in those big moments for your for your country. They're going to, you know, their stock rises up. A lot of those players play for a contract, too. Some of them are going in between clubs or they're in a the back club. So, so, like, a lot of them, you know, uh, push the performance pretty high. 
in order to get eyes on a bigger club. And to be honest, everyone's watching, not just the scouts. Scouts could take a vacation. They're fine. The coaches, all like the exactly. like the uh, <laughs> uh, whole team president, everyone's watching the World Cup. So you're going to see a lot of players like, you know, Hamas uh, got offered to Real Madrid, which I think was a bad idea. He, I mean, he was benched most of the time. Um, but, you know, a lot of these stars are birthed. And uh, we'll see what happens. I think we're going to see a lot more Croatians. I'm telling you, a lot of Croatians play in these – uh, these small clubs in Eastern Europe, you're gonna see them a lot yeah. in these bigger clubs, and uh, we'll see. It's gonna be a good season. Typically, the season I after the World Cup, yeah. the players are a little bit tired, so um, it should be an interesting uh, year. And I can say that. I mean, I can say this for sure. I don't think Real Madrid's gonna win the Champions League next year. So, <laughs> I, I don't really watch like much clubs. To tell you the truth, I only watch some of the, the cup games in a while, playoffs, but. I love international soccer as my favorite. I just love to see each country bring out like guys that you never heard of, young guys, you know, for the country. I like that's my favorite style of soccer. I just feel like they play harder, and you know, there's more upsets to go, you know, and the big names fall, you know. They have because like, I I feel like a great player, like like for example Messi or Ronaldo. These guys could play. It's so easy to play in these clubs where you have everyone's everyone around you is ridiculously good. It's stacked. Yeah. Like like that's not, that's not like. Now Mod- put put Messi in our Argentina and then see what happens. Or put Ronaldo in a, in, a, in a worse team in your own country. That's when you really see these guys' leadership, these guys' tenacity, these guys' will to win. Um, their mental stamina, the stamina, their mental strength, like all these things that you you see in greatness. Like that's what, that's that's where it really shows up, and that's why I like these guys' teams like Japan and, and Russia. These guys I have no names. You know, a lot of these guys they play so hard, and like I I, I admire that more than these these stars that have all these guys around them that you don't even have to do much of anything to, to make a goal. Like, so he's, he's right there, you know? <laughs> you know what I've noticed that, you know, people only watch the, uh, like, only, you know, only watch soccer every four years. But I keep telling them, guys, there's good soccer throughout the years, you know, uh, uh, throughout, like, the season, regular season from August to May. Watch the Premiership. I think that's, like, the best league in Europe right now. It's the highest paid. Watch La Liga. Watch Champions League. Champions League, you know, there's a few playoff games. Uh, there's playoff games in the springtime. Watch that. You know, don't stop. And like you were saying, you know, a lot of these players play in big clubs like Modric. Modric, you know, I mean, I would see him every season uh, with Real Madrid. He, I mean, he's a great player, but obviously he's surrounded with good players. And 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 when when he's on with Croatia, he has to play a little bit harder because you know, like the team around him are uh, it's a little bit weaker compared to Real Madrid. So. You know, most yeah. country teams, they're not as good as the club teams, to be honest. I mean, maybe Brazil, but, you know, it <laughs> really depends who you ask. Or Belgium, you know. There's a few teams that are, 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 are pretty stacked. But, you know, when it comes to these players that go back to their countries, like Ronaldo, they they got to work, you know, work harder, you know, in order to win. So, um, I, I really tell you know, everyone watch the Champions League, watch the Premiership. You know, um, it's on NBC here in America. We got so much access to almost all the leagues in Europe, like the top leagues in Europe. That in and in, in Europe, they can't see. For example, if you're in Italy, um, it's hard to see a game uh, from from like England or Spain. We have it all here in America, and it's That's really true. easy to get. You know, you get you but, know your cable get being sport the NBC. Funny part, yeah, but I have to pack. We can watch that. But the funny part about that whole thing is that yeah, here is where soccer is not is not growing as a professor rate than anywhere else in the world, and MLS is pretty much a joke compared to. <laughs> yeah, that's else, well. Right? That's the thing with soccer. There's so much leagues, you know, and MLS is like swallowed in. Now MLS has improved. Uh, we brought in you know some good players, but um, other than that, I mean. But they're all old, though. All the old guys come here, like, when they're, like, mid-30s, late-30s, they come here, like, big names, like, back camp. All these guys are all deep and they're just old. They're here to get a paycheck and, like, sponsorship deals. That's it. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, See, the who, whole who situation. But, but, like, they're bringing, like, the guy uh, from Montreal FC. He's an Italian. Um, and, you know, he's um, he came when he was 27. Um, and he, you know... Hold on, let me find his name. And Italy would select him a few times. Obviously, people are hesitant. Uh, Sebastian Javinko, you know, um, he was a uh, um, he's an Italian, came at twenty seven. Uh, you see some Mexican players coming over, at, like in their prime. I think once MLS signs players in their prime, um, now you'll see the league more serious. Atlanta 
brought in some Argentinians uh, that this coach, uh, Tite Martinez, came. So, I mean, it'll take time. I think in 20 years, MLS will be the best league in the Americas, better than the Brazilian and Argentinian league. That's my prediction. It'll take some time. Um, and we'll see what happens. Uh, but in America, I think we surpassed soccer is more popular than the NHL. So we're making some progress. You think? I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know about that because, man, people up north, they love their hockey. It's, I mean, <laughs> you know? according to ratings and stats, is either tied or MLS is ahead. Wow. Didn't know that. Yeah. So we're catching on, but it's still a long way to go. You know, there's, uh, NFL is still the best league in uh, North America, and then you got baseball. Well, uh, then you got NBA, then baseball. Look. So, you know, there's a lot of work to be done. I don't know how baseball has so much money. Not a lot of you, man. I don't know how baseball <laughs> gets so much money. I don't understand it. So many games in the season. It's too many games. But, you know what? There's another surf for another day. <laughs> it's getting kind of long now, so. <laughs> well, George, I think, you, uh, how can people reach you? Eternal four one two eight eight at gmail dot com. Hit up a comment on YouTube. Find out which team you like more. Mines or Santiago's? You know, mines are better. Uh, <laughs> and you can reach me at S Leon. Yeah. It's been a pleasure, George. Thanks for joining on to the Sportscast World Cup edition. You were part of the analyst. You and David Hessel and Kevin Lara, uh, and it was a great to have a blast. We'll we'll we'll, we'll be seeing more for uh, more of you uh, during the NFL season. But thank you very much for coming on. For sure, man.